everybody. I feel like I have a full circle because as we came in today at 349 on 49th Street, 18 years ago, my first place in New York was 348 across the street. Unbelievable, full circle. Here I'm on stage. And I was originally born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden. So it's a pleasure being here in New York and you know, feel like you know, came to the US and made it. Granted, Sweden's not that poor. But today we're gonna to talk about crowdfunding. And crowdfunding is a new phenomenon. I just wrote in uh, Wall Street Journal and Forbes about crowdfunding, and that's probably going to reach $10 billion this year. Quite a lot of money for a new industry. But I look at crowdfunding like taxes, like we have. We've had taxes for thousands of years. The community, the ecosystem gets together, pulls the money, and they use the money for the community. Crowdfunding is the same thing, except we're using the internet to make it more efficient and faster. Now, crowdfunding to me uh, was an accident. I wasn't expected to be involved in crowdfunding as we started doing events about three years ago about how to raise money. We cover through media and through writing, how do you raise money? Whether it's theater, whether it is private equity, whether it's other industries of venture capital. And we were doing events about four or five times a month during election year 2011. And of course, crowdfunding was one of the topics in the Jobs Act as we know it today, Jumpstart our Business Startup Act, but on the security equity side. So before I know it, I'm sitting there with my own events and I'm actually pulling people from the audience, just like you're sitting here. I would go into the audience after, because I pulled everybody's bio the night before. And I would just handpick them and sit with them in the back and interview them and find out what they were doing. And crowdfunding had a big momentum in 2011. Both houses were looking to be creating jobs out of the Jobs Act. The Jobs Act has seven different laws. Crowdfunding was one of them. And we were just in the middle of it. I started lobbying. I started to get to meet everybody in the space. And it was quite fascinating. But now let's backtrack a little bit by crowdfunding to me. You know, to me, crowdfunding is when two or more people pay money online towards a service, product, project, experience, or cause. I call it spec. So today, crowdfunding is probably going to reach, well, this year probably around 10 million, but in 2012, it was 2.7 billion. And last year, probably closer to 6 billion than we thought before. And let me see here. This is where the crowdfunding started in 2012. As you see, at least 50% was from North America, 45% from Europe. And I just want to give you, you know, the you know, view from above of what's happening on the crowdfunding. Half of that money is from donations causes. You go online and give money. So they count half of that money from that part of it. And we got some more information where everything's coming from. There's in 2012. And here we have three areas of their, where most of it's coming and still coming. And what you started to see is a lot of companies are moving to the U.S. because we have a tendency here to use credit cards more. And we give per capita more in donations than any other country in the world. Now, there are certain areas of crowdfunding called donations, as I mentioned. Debt, which is microfinancing or peer-to-peer -peer lending, which I'll come back to. Uh, and then there are also rewards, like Kickstarter, where you give something and reward something back. And then finally, you also have, what's the fourth one? Donations, rewards, equity, and I've got a blank here. <laughs> uh, tell me. Equity, there we go, equity is the last one, which is the one that gets most of the attention in the news, which one, we, the one we're writing about, because it's, you're hitting up against the Security Exchange Commission, and they're regulating what you can do with stock. And because of these things, you know, we've seen tremendous growth, but you know, Lending Club, I need to bring Lending Club up, they do debt loans, and this is good for this industry in theater, because you can get non-secure loans for $35,000, up to $35,000 online, peer-to-peer. And they just hit around three, they're going to hit $3.5 billion this year in loans. And it's considered crowdfunding because you can go online and get a loan from other people. People go online to get a loan for a vacation or for a you know, honeymoon, which is amazing. We can go there because they're replacing what the banks are doing today. So I, you know, I encourage everybody to check that out. Um, Lending Club and Prosper is another company also on the debt side doing this because, you know, if you get $100, you pay 110% back, 10% per month, and people are comfortable with this. And both those companies are going to be close to 45% of the whole industry this year, two companies from the U.S., and that's just in debt. Now, everybody knows that crowdfunding you know, is 
started with entertainment. Well, maybe not everybody knows, but the first case that I recorded was, well, everybody recorded was Marillion, a band from the UK using the internet in 1997 to raise $60,000 to go on a tour from their fans. You know, so this is an excellent way for you guys to actually look at how can I raise money. And at the end of this, I'll talk about how to do a successful campaign and what it takes to be successful in this space. Here's how they mix up. But as you see, uh, lending on the debt side is going to be the biggest one this year because when this report was done, they didn't realize that one company would do over $2 billion last year just in debt, which at that point stood for more than what it's saying up here, $5.1 million. Billion. Now I wanted to talk a little bit more about you know, how to do a successful campaign, whether it's for backdrop set, whether it's for a theater piece, or whether it's for a video. And some of the things that are common from what we're writing and the PR groups that we're working with is that you need to have a guerrilla tactic. Just like in theater, I, we did, I actually produced a couple of shows at Carnegie Hall a few years back, because the original loft, which actually was a physical loft, not anymore, we used to entertain. We had people play the piano, we had performances. It was like the salon of the old days. And before I knew it, I'm doing a concert at Carnegie Hall, so I decided I'm gonna interview people who actually do it for a living. And what I found out, like in theater and a concert, is the more people they have on stage, the more reach do they have to more people. They had more access to crowds. And in crowdfunding, the first key word is crowd. And when I say crowd, it's not crowd that you think you have, but the crowd that actually listens to you. Look, Zach Braff, he raised $3.1 million on Kickstarter last year online on crowdfunding. Why Sabrina the Witch tried to raise a million dollars, couldn't even raise 50,000, because she wasn't connected with the crowd. So when I say crowd, it's not only that you need to be connected to the crowd, it's also find a crowd that might not be yours, but has a rapport with somebody. So obviously, magazines are great to partner up with. A rock band could be wonderful, getting a lot of people on the stage. And then, of course, there's a whole world of affiliate marketing where people take their list of people that listens to them and they sell products from other people's lists and they cross-pollinate. Huge industry, it's right there. I mean, we work with people coming to us asking us, how do you do a successful campaign? One thing you can do is such as, you know, find out which bloggers are important for your show. Identify them, research them, but don't reach out to them right away. Do the same thing with newspapers. Identify them, make a list of 50. And then you make decide how do you approach them. Now the key here then is make sure they publish what you want them to publish the same week. Because you want momentum. You don't want it to drizzle a little here and here. You want at least one out of three people to hear about you the day you start your campaign. And you'll know within 72 hours how successful you're gonna be. I mean the world record, well until it was a computer game, it was Pebble Watches. They were actually speaking at my conference in Palo Alto, May 9, 2012. And we did 400 conferences on capital, fund, capital raising all over the world. We still do it. You know, they came in, at the end of their campaign, they raised over $10 million in 30 days. And they couldn't even get angels to give them money. A year later, Charles River Ventures, a VC firm, gave them an amazing $15 million in addition to what they already raised. So the whole industry, both from private equity down to everybody here in entertainment, are looking at crowdfunding as a way to raise money. But you also can do other things. You can raise involvement. You can raise awareness. You can, you know, raise information. You can build an email list of people you want involved. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing, which I tell a lot of people. I think it should be a cultural tool for you to use over and over and over again because it takes a lot of energy to coordinate all the marketing and coordinate all the energy and resources and social capital you have. So we're back to the crowd. Find a crowd that listens to you. I mean, a good example is, you know, if you're doing a show about the meatpacking district, you know, you might not want to email 500,000 people they're vegetarians, right? And based on these things, you combine that also with people in your network. There are certain softwares out there where you can actually go out and influence employees or actors or people's involvement on stage in your show through their Facebook, but in a coordinated effort. Or LinkedIn, which makes you know, social media marketing very important. And we've been you know, working on social media marketing for many years to make sure we can actually reach as many people as possible. So we continue writing a lot about this. 
Now, um, when we started, you know, as I said, it was an accident. I started in crowdfunding because we were doing events on a monthly basis, and it was election year. Little did I know that our investors, which are family offices and pro private equity shops from Europe and the US, uh, would actually you know, get the crowdfunders involved. So we had speakers going down to DC as subcongressional witnesses every week. So every time we had an event, mostly in New York and some of them in LA, we got fresh news from congressional hearings on what they wanted to do, which bills they wanted to f pursue, and that was the jumpstart of our Business Start Act Act, where seven of those bills were put together March 8th, 2012. So I'm in the middle lobbying here, picking people from the audience of my own events, interviewing them, completely fascinated. And, you know, because I feel like I'm always learning. I love to learn. So what better way is there than to listen to other people talking about their dreams and what they want to do? So by March 18th and right before April 5th, we started the Crowdfunding Professional Association and the Crowdfund Intermediate Regulatory Advocates, which actually started dealing with SEC to make sure that the equity portion of this bill would become legalized. And it's getting a lot of attention, but equity is really only 3 4% of all of the, the money in the world on crowdfunding. It's not, very, it's not a big amount yet, but people have hopes that it will be. But for everybody in the audience, I think just the donation and reward, like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Crowd Valley, and other groups, are a great place to start for you guys to look at it and see what you can do. You know, certain sites will let you have your own crowdfunding site. There are sites out there that allows you to do it by yourself, you know, as opposed to trying to build it for forty, fifty thousand dollars And there are also a lot of them in entertainment, which are very focused. So I encourage everybody here to do your research to find out what fits you the best. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.